Can you tell which of these ships belongs in Star Wars and which ones don't? Even if you've never seen any of the ships before, if you've seen enough Star Wars then you just know what belongs in Star Wars and what doesn't. Why is this? What makes all the spaceships within Star Wars feel like they all belong together in one world? And how do other sci-fi universes do the same thing and separate themselves from the crowd? Well, it's all possible through design theory. This doesn't just apply to spaceship or vehicle design, but nearly every aspect of a world being built on screen or in media. So I decided the best way to illustrate this was by creating my own ship within Star Wars, and show you what you need to understand before creating a unique and interesting design yourself. But before we create the ship, we need to ask, what makes a Star Wars ship feel like Star Wars? So let's pull back a little further and go over the principles that go into designing anything. First is shape. Now, this can deal with many aspects of your design and appears everywhere throughout it, so it can be a bit confusing on where to even start with this. But an easy way of breaking it down is by separating your subject into its primary shapes, squares, triangles, and circles. By breaking down your overall form into simple shapes, you can establish the feeling of your design. You can see this used in everything from vehicle design all the way over to characters. Now, while there's many ways to interpret these shapes, the general interpretive meaning behind the primary shapes are that squares are strong, confident, and orderly, Circles are friendly, soft, and appealing, and triangles are sharp, stealthy, and perhaps even evil. For example, look at Jafar. He looks like one evil triangle. You can also play with the symmetry of your shapes within the design. Something super symmetrical comes off as confident and technologically advanced, while something asymmetrical might come off a bit more rugged and loose. But again, there's really no hard fast rules, and generally understanding how the fundamental shapes are used in different designs will give you a good understanding of how to use it in your own designs as well. Now, scale is simple. How big is your ship? Determining this not only affects the ship itself, but also its relationship to the world around it. A ship the size of a city really doesn't have that strong of a presence if another ship is the size of a planet, while a ship only a few hundred feet across can dwarf everything around it and come off super menacing. Again, no hard fast rules, but remember that scale tells a lot of the story behind a design. Now, detail can be the trickiest thing to nail down, but much like shape, it's one of the big deciding factors in what your ship will feel like. The amount of detail, the size, the distribution, and the repetition of those details can tell you a lot about the design's scale, purpose, and even moral alignment. For example, both Alex Gray and H.R. Geiger use a ton of repetitive detail and biological reference within their artworks, yet achieve a completely different feeling. One is balanced, peaceful, and expands beyond human consciousness, while the other is dark and biological, exploring the places of humanity we'd rather not think about. Now, I'm going to put both color and material together because they come really together as one thing. Color and material is the quickest and easiest way to communicate your subject's alliance, purpose, or even its emotion. Now, you can go really deep into color theory and study materials to no end, and I think that could be a whole video on its own, but I think as an artist it's a good thing to get a grasp of so that you can use it to your own advantage. How you interpret color, however, is entirely subjective and something you can play with a lot to get a ton of different results. Now, we know what goes into most designs, but that doesn't give us a lot of clues about where to go when creating a spaceship for Star Wars. Lucky for us, Doug Chang, the man who basically created the designs and worlds behind the prequels, created four principles that gave him a good foundation in creating Star Wars ships that felt iconic and fitting for the world. Rule number one, don't make anything stand out. Now, this may seem counterintuitive when designing something that's supposed to feel iconic, but it's important that you don't want people to remember your ship for the wrong reasons. If you're creating a ship for a specific world with specific rules, you should make sure that ship makes sense in that world. Rule number two, visual contrast. Now, I know I just told you not to make your ship stand out from the crowd, but you also don't want your design to end up boring and forgettable. So what do you do? Well, don't focus on creating something completely new, but rather something that's easy to read. Having clear cut color palettes and simplified shapes making up its silhouette can be enough to make your ship pretty recognizable. Rule number three, familiarity. Another way of making something memorable is by replicating features of something that people are already familiar with in the real world. For example, Star Destroyers mimic many of the features of battleships during World War II, and Jabba's barge shares a ton of similarities with sailing ships of the 16th century. It can be really hard to come up with a completely unique design with a completely unique purpose, so basing it on something from reality can be an easy way to give it a more memorable and fitting look. Rule number four, iconic shapes. Behind Star Wars' entire aesthetic, Ralph McQuarrie visually brought to life the world we have come to know so well. His work laid the foundation of repeating shapes and details throughout a plethora of designs, and since then the tradition has been kept. You can create a ton of designs just from one theme and style, and if you're creating something for Star Wars, 
there's really nothing wrong with taking inspiration from Star Wars. Following these rules as a loose guide gives us a good idea of how to stay within the lines of Star Wars design theory. There are obviously a lot of exceptions for each rule individually, but rarely will you find a design within Star Wars that breaks all of them at once and still feels like it fits in the world. But now that we have that covered, there's nothing left to do but actually create the ship. I'm going to be outlining how I conceptualize the ship as a 3D artist, but a lot of these steps are one-to-one -one with other art forms. If you're a 2D artist, you still have to start with the sketch, then detail your drawing, and finally shade and color, just as a 3D artist will start out by blocking basic shapes, begin detailing their model, and finally add textures and materials. Okay, so you're going to have to hold up for one more second, because before we jump right in, we're going to have to get some reference first. Now, this doesn't need much explaining since we already covered a ton of detail about deconstructing a specific aesthetic, but there's a few things to think about when grabbing reference images to use for your spaceship. The first thing you want to do is define what you will be creating. If you grab a giant mishmash of different ships and references with completely different vibes, you're going to find that reference is actually going to bog you down and make you confused on where to go next. Next, you got to define what each piece of reference is actually for. I grabbed some reference for the overall shape and balance of the form, but also a bunch of references just for details. Doing it this way makes it so you take from a bunch of different places while still having a final ship that marries details and overall form to create something unique yet familiar. Okay, so you have your reference in front of you, you have your canvas in front of you, and now you're ready to actually make the spaceship. And I know you've been waiting a while, but this is really where you want to slow down and take your time. Using your reference, start to make out some simple shapes that create an overall form. This is the time to try out weird ideas, push the limits, and see what you can make that steps away from being too much like other ships. Now, I knew I wanted to create a Sith Starfighter that had both a function in combat, but also stealth, and having good reference along with a definitive goal while blocking out actually helped me think outside of the box rather than hold me back. I usually start with a form, then duplicate it as I go and reiterate on what I originally had. Now, while I try not to over-detail the models, I do think about the steps I would take to add those details, trying to think of everything's form and function and how they can play off of each other. But this is probably one of the most enjoyable parts of the process. Revert to your childhood and just have fun, and think about what feels the most interesting to you. So there are a million different hard surface modeling tutorials and a ton of information on the internet, so I'm not going to go super in depth with every single thing I did to model the spaceship. I think it's better if I cover the different ways of approaching modeling something, and the techniques I use throughout different parts of the spaceship. The first thing to think about is how you can break up the overall forms. Now that you have a simple block out of your ship, try thinking about how multiple parts can roughly form the overall shape. Try zooming out and taking a wider look at what you're doing, and don't get too lost in the details quite yet. This is also a good time to change anything you don't like about your original block out before you get too deep in. Now, after my ship has its secondary details completed, this is when I like to focus on specific areas and add those really fine details. This is a great time to establish some of the mechanics and inner workings of your ship, and don't be scared to take from your references. Even the original modelers at ILM working on creating ships for Star Wars used model kits of tanks and planes to make a lot of the tiny details they used on the ships. So that's an overall view of the process of modeling a ship, but how do you actually use the tools to be able to create what you want? Well, there's a few ways to model when creating anything. A lot of these tools can be found in any 3D software, and there's usually a workaround no matter what you're working with. Now, there's destructive modeling tools like extrude, loop cuts, bevels, insets, knife cuts, and a whole lot more that aid in keeping topology clean, while allowing you to quickly achieve the form you're looking for. Do note, however, destructive means you can't just turn your changes off and on. Unless you did it recently and can undo, there's not much you can do to go back easily. So be careful. But that's where modifiers come in. Modifiers are great because they quickly allow for you to add properties to your model like mirroring, array, subdivide, bevel, and a whole lot of other crazy things. But the great part is you can tweak and even remove any of the changes you make to your model at any time with a panel on the right. Using modifiers along with the more basic tools is going to speed your workflow up and make it easier to get really high quality results. And finally, there's sculpting, which is kind of like the free bird of modeling types. I didn't use any sculpting with this spaceship, but for things with really complex shapes or organic forms, there's really nothing more quick and intuitive than the sculpting tools within programs like Blender and ZBrush. But again, have fun. Modeling is the core part of creating your ship, and the time and care you put into every detail is what counts. Don't rush, don't panic, and if something needs to change, then don't hesitate to take the time to change it. The further you get in, the less you'll be able to go back and change things. Again, there's so many ways to approach modeling, and it's at the end of the day a practice thing, so start simple and add to your brain library as you go. You'll be making some really great stuff in no time. 
Okay, so now you have finished modeling your spaceship, but you're gonna have to add textures and materials to truly call it complete. For modeling most assets, especially ones that I need a lot of details, I use Substance Painter. I find it to be the fastest and easiest way to quickly add materials, and it gives me a lot of creative freedom, but you can do a lot of the same things in Blender with a few clever workarounds and a good understanding of the shader editor. Also, do note, if you're texturing inside a Blender, you're going to need to UV unwrap. Sometimes automatic tools like Q-Project and Smart UV Project will work, but having a good understanding of how UV unwrapping actually works is going to help you if you come across any problems. Since Substance is layer-based, I was able to separate the materials and give them layers of grunge and wear easily. With some beginner tutorials and some practice, I was able to get a good feel for the basics, and I was able to get the results I needed a lot easier than I could in Blender. But now that that's finished, I exported all the textures in the UV Unwrap model and brought them back into Blender. I did some final cleanup and tweaking, and my spaceship was finished. Now, approaching creating a spaceship, building some small asset, character, or anything else that needs to have both a unique identity and fit within a larger world can be pretty difficult. But by studying the design languages of both fictional media and real world examples, you can create your very own Star Wars spaceship. Or other stuff too, I guess. Not just Star Wars spaceships. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe, and if you go check out my Patreon, I've uploaded some longer tutorials for how I created the ship and the animation. Thanks to all my patrons who support the channel, and I'm excited to bring some new content and get some older stuff I created up on there too. Anyways, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.